Happy New Year, folks. This is Shadow Stars coming at you with another video. Um, today, I know I keep on saying this every video, trying to keep it short, but you know, things just happen. But you know what? I'm going to keep on doing me. Um, today's video, I'm going to give you a quick update on how the box office numbers look um, to wrap up 2022. And now as we move into 2023, um, definitely going to be constantly updating the model, putting in uh, more feeding it more data obviously as new data continues to come in as the days pass um, and I'm just going to give you um, more analysis into the numbers so without further ado once again um, let's show you some of the figures for those new to the channel um, I present you all these facts all these numbers these statistics all these figures all from sources that you you can double check yourself. This is not behind some sort of paywall. This is not behind some sort of paid service, Discord, what, whatever. This is all freely accessible. You don't need to sign up anything for it. So the first page here, grabbing these domestic box office figures from this website called Box Office Mojo. It's by IMDB Pro. So we can see here, box office quarter four, 1.77 billion. And we can see how the past couple days ending the year went. So this is for daily box office for 2022. And we can go back to December and we'll see. We ended 2022 December with 676 million. So this is the source of where I'm getting this information from. And here I have inputted all that information into an Excel spreadsheet. So what I want to do is give you some more information, some more data. I've covered this in previous videos and looking at how Q4, Q4's performance was dragged far behind what Q4 2021 did. And we can see how it's lagging behind Q3, Q2, it only beat Q1. And we can see, hey, what's the difference between Q4 and Q3? What's the difference between Q4 this year and Q2? Now, I wanted to give some more context, more perspective of, hey, what were the CEOs? What were the president of these com movie theater companies? What were they thinking? What, would, what were the numbers that they were expecting? So what I did was I pulled... Um, earnings call transcripts from two companies. So obviously one we're going to cover here is AMC and one is going to be uh, CNK Cinemark. So from their Q3 earnings, obviously we don't have Q4 earnings for any of these companies yet. You have Sean Gamble, president and CEO. On that Q3, Q3 earnings call, what did he say? Um, so if history isn't any indication, we'd be looking at next year potentially growing to around 100 and 105, which represents 75 to 80 percent or of, or so of pre-pandemic volume, and could fluctuate big step forward from 2022, which was about 60 percent. So I plugged that number in: 75 percent, 80 percent pre-pandemic figures. What's that going to knit you around? Well. That would get you f fiscal 2023, 8.5 between 8.5 to 9 billion, roughly, almost 9.1 billion. And for that to occur, what's the growth from 2022 to hit those figures? To hit 75%, you need a 15.7% growth between. 2022 to 2023 to hit 80 you need a 23 percent almost 23.5% growth so that's just from this is what they're saying on their earnings call this is from CNK now let's talk about what Adam Aaron CEO of AMC chairman and CEO what did he say during his Q3 earnings call Expectation for full year of 2022, when this year is over, is all over, is that domestic box office will have dramatically risen and increased yet again by not quite, but almost by 75%. Well, okay, if we compare 
2022 to 2021, that final figure, 64%. Almost 11% below what he was thinking. He said almost by, almost by 75%. 64% is not almost 75%. It's a pretty big miss. And he's saying what? Movie titles currently expected to be released in 2023. Box office would grow again by between 15 to 25% and possibly even more. Wow. First of all, let's look at the projections of when he is talking about almost 75%. When he projected a 75%, growth, sorry, 75% growth, that's looking at about $7.8 billion. What we ended at, realistically, was $7.36 billion. So nearly half a billion, almost $500 million off. But then, okay, let's factor in, hey, he's saying 15 to 25%, if not more. So what does that look like then, figure-wise? Looking for nearly $8.47 billion to $9.2 billion. Now, if we look at it, the projections between what CNK is saying and AMC is saying. AMC is giving a far more bright, optimistic um, projection. And really, I mean, he's saying 15 to 25% growth, but even possibly even more. Now, you'll have people that'll say, that'll, when you get, whenever you give any sort of estimate, you can have people that come in a lot lower a lot come, some people come out a lot higher. And some people, I mean, in between those figures. So you'll have, when you average them out, I mean, and also consider the median. But nonetheless, I mean, these figures, they're not too far apart from each other. Because when you look at what they said, they're saying 75 to 80% pre-pandemic, which gives you around that 15 to almost 25% growth projection range. And that's what AMC is saying too. So between the two, um, two large uh, movie theater chains that operate um, not only just in the U.S. but um, across the world, they're giving similar projections. But the question becomes, how reliable are their projections? AMC was expecting almost 75%, but hey, it only did 64%. So when they say 15 to 25%, is that narrative going to change? When they do their Q4 earnings call? When they do their overall fiscal year 2022 earnings call? When they file that 10, 10K, are they going to be as optimistic now that they have three new, quarter, uh, three new months of new data? You had that big release. You had Wakanda. You had Black Pan... Um, um, not Black Panther, Black Adam. We still have Avatar going through. How is that going to change the message? We'll have to see. Um, and also, just to do some quick math here, and to see, um, to help gauge expectations, what I did right here is, hey, what's the daily performance needed to match that 15% growth projection for January? that daily performance, almost 14.5 million every day. What do you need to match 2022 January? About 12.5 million. And so far, two days into the new year of 2023, roughly around 63 million. So hey, you're above projections right now. If you wanted to match not only January of last year, which only did 389, but also if you wanted to factor in that 15% growth. Now, obviously, I don't expect every single month to show a 15% growth. I'm sure some, some months may lack, be under 15%, but some other months may exceed that. So maybe you have a July, maybe you have a May, June, July, that's spectacular. You have 25% growth. You may never know, but nonetheless, this is just an average if you say, if you average every single month, 15% across the board, that's what, so far, January, you would need that. 
So we'll have to see. So this is all, the first section right here, I cover all the numbers. I showed you where the sources of my data was from. I talked about pulling the information from the earnings call, did the calculations. So in the second part of the video, what I want to cover is this guy. I came across this guy when I watched um, a live stream, another guy similar to my, uh, my thoughts that we both call out a lot of these YouTubers that grift in particular AMC. So this guy is called Frankie Muhammad, Muhammad. And if we, oops, this guy, Frankie Muhammad, he operates a home-based business in network marketing. His passion is blogging, making videos, making money online and being a network marketer. He created his channel to motivate people to be an entrepreneur and create a, uh, establish a creative mindset. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Not bad. Just under 5,000 subscribers. Looks like he pushes out lots and lots of videos about AA. Adam Aaron, Adam Aaron, AMC, 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 AMC. All he does is push out AMC videos, it looks like. But I just wanted to see what's his message and how consistent is it? Just going through it, I, I found something really interesting or rather hilarious. Where did he go? So 13 days ago, he puts out a video, Adam Aaron is not the root of the problem. Don't turn on your CEO. 13 days ago. Let's see. And then what? Two days later, he says, Adam Aaron is not our friend in the AMC short squeeze. The next video, I don't trust Adam Aaron's reverse stock split. I th then the next video, the next day, Adam Aaron's reverse stock split proposal is dangerous and a trap. The more, oh, hedge funds using Adam Aaron and tricking diamond hand apes. What, another day later? What, four days later? I don't trust Adam Aaron. Same, or similar six days ago. I think Adam Aaron is a narcissist and an ungrateful CEO. So what happened? Adam Aaron is not the root of the problem. Don't turn on your CEO. But just a couple days later, you, you, you've completely changed your mind. You don't trust Adam Aaron. You're saying hedge funds are using him. You're saying that his, his reverse stock split proposal is dangerous and a trap. You're saying he's not your friend in the short squeeze. All his narrative has all changed. So what I want to do, um, I'm just going to look at his most recent video. Because um, I thought I'd change up a little bit. Honestly, it got really ridiculous trying to cover that stocks and crypto plays guy every single day, um, every single video. So I'm going to cart, um, cover some of his videos, and then I'm going to move on to the, to the next next couple folks down the list that I have. And then we'll, we'll cycle through. We'll see. We'll, we'll do periodic updates on some of these frauds and grifters. So without further ado, let's go watch his real quick. What's up, man? It's fun. And I can't stand watching their full video, so I'm going to 2 exit. Like, let me say, I'm not a financial advisor. Anything that I say, well, yeah. you should buy, sell, or hold stock. I'm just entertaining on YouTube, just sharing my opinions. Look, let me say this. Um, for those that send it, that's sending me videos on um, markets with Nate to try to help me understand what's going on with the reverse stock split and the conversion, y'all might as well go ahead and stop sending those videos, man, because I'm going to delete them. Because, first of all, I really don't know who she is. I'm looking at them. I really don't know who she is. I don't know who she works for. And on top of that, she don't, she don't even have any AMC shares. So y'all can go ahead and stop sending, sending me those videos. Look, I've, I've always said that. I okay, so right off the bat, hey, you don't hold the AMC share, so you know what? I don't trust your information. Okay, so right off the bat, I get the vibes of, hey, this guy can't really critically think. You have a definitive bias, and when you're presented with new information, you're like, oh, no, don't need it, because, hey, you know what? You don't hold the stock that I like. What you should be doing is, hey, listen through the video. See if there's another perspective. See if, hey... Does this data, is this correct? Verify that data. What's she talking about? Is it true? Is it false? 
because hey, if you're so into your little whatever your your narrative, hey, this stock is gonna squeeze, and you're you're so for the cause, that what you should be doing is hey, verify that source. Is this information correct? Is this someone I should be supporting, or is this someone that hey I should be calling out? I don't know. That's what I would do if I felt so strongly on on something. Of, of of the supposed narrative of these oh synthetic shares of this this moas this short squeeze, then hey if there's another person that's supposedly in the movement then hey I want to verify they legit they fake are they providing something new new information new data new perspective I don't know that's just me apparently but Frankie he's not into it. I know hedge funds, I know short sellers, the one percenters, and the devil. I know that they are a threat to the AMC short squeeze play. So I'll tell the devil. I will Moaz. But I have also come to the conclusion, hoping they're wrong, but there is a potential that AMC itself is a threat to our Moaz. You see what I'm saying? And like I said yesterday, man, most wealth in this country is created in ugliness. Meaning that most of the wealth that people got, they did a whole lot of dirty stuff to get it. And I'm like, what? Oh my goodness. More conspiracy theories and... I'm going to skip a couple a little bit ahead. of retail in the process of them making all their money. I would say, man, if you think that, I think you're being kind of naive. And you see what I'm saying? This is what I'm trying to find out. This is what I want to know. I want to know why is it that other apes are trying to silence, silence other apes and make them feel bad if they're trying, trying to get Adam Aaron to do something about the corruption and the illegal niggas show and take a place in the stock. Why you Where is the proof? Where is the evidence of this, of all these theories? Show me the proof. Show me the evidence that this is occurring. No one can provide that evidence. No YouTuber. All these AMC grifters and frauds. Boss Blunts. Bigums. Matt, um, Matt Kors. Trace Trades. Um, Rockstar. Whatever. Astro. The Mass Investor. Common Sense Investor. Tony Denaro, um, Al from Boston. Skycam Ape, um, Avi Harkushin or whatever. Um, tons and tons of these folks. All these folks with mass followings, with thousands and thousands of followers, with massive platforms to reach out to. their supposed viewers. Oh, Jackson Hunter. And, and, I mean, the list goes on and on. But no one can provide legit evidence. You're trying to make them feel bad. You know, why are you trying to make them feel bad if they're trying to express to Adam Aaron what their expectations is for him as a CEO? There's no problem with expressing your opinion. Don't get me wrong. The question becomes the actions that you want him to take as a CEO. Is this something that he can do or he can't do? Is it logical? That's the important thing. You keep on asking him, oh, do a... a um, a share count and okay Adam Aaron has said hey he, he's done what six total share counts he's talked about hey you know what we have no association with these AMC tokens these AMC coins those are fake he's, co he's come out and said hey these synthetic shares no support nothing to support that we don't know anything about it so you need to ask him questions that he's able to answer and just because he doesn't give you the answer you want doesn't mean that something's going to change. Why are you trying to make them feel bad? You see what I'm saying? I mean, if they're if they trying to express that to Adam Aaron, it ain't going to hurt the short squeeze play. It's not going to stop the short squeeze play from running. It damn sure ain't going to hurt Adam Aaron. He'd have made over $43 million. And it's not going to... The way I see it, you guys are going it the wrong way. It's no different from, hey, you go into the store, go in, you, you pick up some item at the grocery store, you go to pay for it. Items ten bucks. You hand the per the cashier twenty dollars. You should get ten dollars in change, right? So instead of asking them, "Hey, can I get my change for ten dollars?" You ask you you tell them, "Hey, can I get twenty dollars in change?" Well, you only paid twenty dollars. You should only be getting ten dollars back. Maybe the the analogy or whatever this scenario is odd. The whole point of my, my example is that, hey, it needs to make sense. The stuff that you're asking him needs to make sense. 
you need evidence, you need facts behind it. When you spend your time asking the CEO to do all this stupid shit that doesn't make sense, you're just wasting his time. You're wasting his energy. You're preventing him from doing his work as a CEO. And and all in all, that hurts your supposed whatever, your your movement of you want the company to succeed. You want the company to supposedly squeeze something that occurred way back. The, the stock already squoze. It went to $72. You didn't sell. That's your problem. You continuing to hold and losing value on your stock is not because of all this synthetic shares and naked shorting. It's because your company has shit fundamentals. Once again, cover this in tons of my videos. Financial 10 Qs. Company is burning money. It is bleeding cash. It is burning cash by the wheelbarrow. Not like stocks and crypto plays saying that, oh, hey, you got AMC's got money pouring in through the doors. No, it's pouring money out the doors. It's losing money. Hundreds of millions of dollars every quarter. Your profits, your profits from admissions, your ticket sales, it's not enough. This is my domestic breakdown. Their ticket profit, what, on average, 200 million. They bring in roughly 400, right? A little over 400. Half of that is your profit. Your total revenue, it's nearly 750 of that revenue, your profit is only 200 from ticket. But look at your concessions, your concessions, concessions alone. Look at the massive profit margins. The problem is not the box office. Well, it's a part contributing factor. But the thing is that your business model, movie theater's business model of making money on the tickets, it's, that's not the deal. It's the concessions. It's the other stuff that brings in the money. That's where your margins are. If you learn to read financial statements, you'd understand that, hey, the company has tons. Look at their assets. Look at their liabilities. Look at how much money that they're burning. Look at, look at their operating expenses. Look at their rent. Look at their depreci depreciation. Look at the margins. How much are they spending on paying debt? You understood none of that, and then you chose to invest into the company. I heard this stuff. So what is, what is your motive and what is your agenda for doing? I don't understand it. You see what I'm saying? And uh, it's sad, but I just think maybe that we got a lot of people in our community that's running around, and they got blindfolds on. And they the only people with blindfolds on is actually you, man. You refuse to, once again, look at the financials. You can also look at, look at the box office to see. Because you'll have an effect. If box office is slow, obviously your revenue will be, your ticket sales will be less too. Ticket sales obviously do contribute. Your ticket profits will definitely go down. But the bigger part is, hey, less people going to the movie theaters because less tickets are being sold means less opportunity for your concessions to be sold. Less gift cards, less merchandise, less memberships, etc. Being manipulated about the illegal naked short and criminal activity that's going on in the stock. Uh, criminal activity, naked shorting, no evidence. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Let's go on. The 1% of the AMC as a company. What if they got the same goals? You see what I'm saying? Their goals is to make sure that those billions of synthetic shares that the 1% is created. Billions of synthet illegal synthetic shares. Where's your evidence? To try to bankrupt AMC. Are there synthetic shares when it comes to AMC? Are they say that none don't exist because that makes their job easier? Look at it like this. There is really no pressing need to do a 1 to 10 reverse stock split. In my opinion, there's no pressing need for it. So why is it being pushed? We got there's no pressing need for it. Okay. What's the share price of AMC again? 
Is it below $10? Is it single digits? Yes. What about ape? Single digits? Yes. Do you not understand why it's being done? The reason why they're first combining AMC and ape is that, hey, look, there is an arbitrage opportunity, it looks like. AMC and ape are supposedly, they have, they're supposed to have the same voting power. And all in all, they're supposed to be basically equal. Yet, look at the price difference. One's in the single do dollar range, other one in that five dollar range. So you have a significant discount between what Ape is and what AMC is. So what happened with Entire Capital is that, hey, they were able to buy tons of shares on the cheap. They're buying tons of stock for the company, getting a large portion of ownership at a very big discount, more than it's the overall value of the, of the company at the current value. So when you combine that, you're hoping to eliminate that discount, that arbitrage, that opportunity that, that exists. And then the whole reason why you're going to reverse split is that, hey, you don't want to have it trading like a freaking penny stock. You, you don't want it under sub $5. Because, hey, once you get down to that two, that $1 range, oh, here comes NASDAQ, here comes NYSE, oh, here's your notice for delisting, because, hey, your stock is below our threshold, that minimum requirement. So that's why they need to do a reverse stock split. You choosing to vote no, all you're doing is to... Even if the vote, you say you somehow magically have enough votes to, to deter uh, the proposal from going through, magically somehow, on some miracle, which I extremely doubt, then hey, all you did was delay the inevitable, because we know that, hey, just looking at the box office, we know that Q4, slow, slower than Q2, Q3, and we know, hey, how did Q2 and Q3 do? How much money did they burn? Did they make profit in Q4? No, most likely they burned anywhere from another 100 to 200 plus million dollars. We already have the info. It's just we don't have the earnings call yet. That's all that it is. So the stock price will continue to tank. And we can see on a daily basis, we can look at, hey, how are the movie theaters doing? What's the figures looking like? We know what movies are being released in January. So we can see, hey, what's the performance looking like? It's different from other companies where you might need to wait to see more data. But for stuff like AMC and movie theaters, you can nearly see this data with a one to two day lag. You don't have to wait a month. You don't have to wait a month like Tesla and say, oh, what, what are they, to, uh, or whatever, or any vehicle, uh, automotive um, vehicle company. You don't have to wait a month to see, oh, hey, how many cars did they produce? How many cars did they deliver? No, you only have a one to two day lag. Yeah, over 10, we got five to 10 million retail investors. It's one of the most popular stocks in the stock market. AMC ain't finna go bankrupt. They ain't finna get delisted. Oh, they're not going to go bankrupt based on what? Your thorough analysis of their financials? They're not going to get delisted? Oh, uh, well, look at the stock price now. Continues to decline. They're going to get a warning at the current rate that they're going. You know what I'm saying? It's just going to take them a while man, to pay off their debt. First, they got to deal with the criminal activity in the stock. It's going to take a while to pay off their debt. When they have a net loss of hundreds of millions, how are they going to pay off their debt of over $5 billion? Tell me, how are they going to pay that off? Do you know when they got to pay that off by? You know how their debt is broken down? What years? How much did they got to pay? You know the interest rates on those debt on the on that debt? Do you know what kind of debt that they have? Secured, unsecured? But in my opinion, there is no pressing need for a one to ten reverse stock split. But I think. The See, it's because you have no understanding of the fundamentals. You have no understanding of basic markets. 
you have no knowledge of really trading. And basically, you come up with these tinfoil hat theories of, hey, oh, illegal, oh, synthetic, blah, 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 blah. Because it doesn't fit your narrative. Hey, you know what? I invested in this company, and I think it's going to do really well. But you had no supporting evidence for it. You have no facts. And when things go wrong, you blame the market of, hey, you know what? I, I knew that the um, stock was going to do well, but what it's going down. It must be manipulated. No, it's because you're retarded. Absolutely ridiculous. The reason why, that's just my opinion. You see what I'm saying? And you know, let's entertain this. Because like I said, man, I think I can watch. I'm going to close with this. What if, because see, with, see, see with, with Adam Eric and AOC, everything, man, is about business. All this shit is about business and money. They don't care nothing about retail investors. Some of, I think some of us, man, we not even, maybe folks don't care. This, this shit is about business and money. So what if, man, the 1% have came to AMC? And they said, look, Adam Aaron, AMC, I tell you what, if you help us kill them away, if you help us get rid of all our synthetic shares, if you make sure that retail investors don't get paid off of them beans of synthetic shares, and if you can get rid of 90% of their shares, I tell you what, after the reverse stock split, if you get all that done, we'll make sure we don't show your company no more. We'll make sure that your job is easier for you, right? We'll make sure. That this is absolutely ridiculous. You think they're going to make some sort of deal? You think that thing exists? They're shorting it because they see the financials. They see how the company is losing money. It's They're not going to come up with a deal and say, oh, you know what? Hey, we're going to stop shorting your company. No, shorting has been a mechanic in this market for quite some time. It's something that is needed because you have a company that's way overvalued you have something where the stock price doesn't justify the current valuation of the company doesn't justify its real value eventually that value will come down eventually it'll go to that price that makes sense question becomes how long does that take but no it's not because these hedge funds and their colluding with adam aaron to say that hey you know what we're gonna stop short no come on like it's absolute ignorance how long has this guy been making videos for for amc he made his account in 2017 how far he's got to have been making videos for like probably at least a year let's see amc seven months eight months wish it would load faster nine 11, two, no, no, okay. More than a year ago, let's see, Tava. So first, looks like first one was this. And what one, when was it? One year ago, January, January 1st, that's the first. That's the first time you made a AMC video, is that right? Hold on, so he started going in January 1st of 2022 and he still doesn't know? Good God, this guy is an absolute moron. He must be down really, really big on this position. Not as bad as if he got into it back in 2021, when he could have potentially bought it at the 50s and 60s, but nonetheless, this guy is an absolute moron. Absolute shame. But you know what? Another fraud called out. This guy, no clue what he's talking about. Another retarded ape. And with that, gonna end the video. Whoa, another 30 plus minute video. Apologize for running long, but you know how it is. I'm gonna have to keep on looking to push myself to help cut down on a lot of the, the length of this. But once again, folks, I uh, hope you appreciated the video. Hope you liked the information I give out. Hope you like that I'm calling out these absolute grifters, these frauds. Folks that have no clue what the hell they're talking about. So if you like the content, please hit the like, subscribe, share it with your folks so that they can get this information. I don't do this to grift. I don't do it to monetize. I don't monetize. I don't think I even qualify to monetize. My whole point is, hey, you know what? We need to combat the misinformation. We need to stop these retards, these folks that are pumping and dumping stocks. Okay, maybe they're not maliciously doing it. Maybe he's genuinely supportive but he's just retarded he's pushing out wrong information and people who don't know better they're going into these trades based on misinformation sure that's their problem but you know what i think that it's wrong 
that you shouldn't be you shouldn't allow this misinformation to be continuously pumped you should be looking into your data you should be looking into your figures you should be looking into your statements and verify hey is this correct is this wrong if you're wrong you need to come out do corrections on it you need to admit your mistakes but these guys none of them are saying oh i was wrong oh i understood it wrong nope none of them are learning none of them are accepting new information they continue to be in their little echo chambers hoping for the moas hoping that they get life-changing money they want this get quick rich scheme but they still won't acknowledge that hey you know what they've been swindled they've been they fell for the tricks of these amc grifters of these stock youtubers that had no clue what the hell they're talking about a lot of them just joined investing in the stock market they didn't know anything all it all they did was sell you a pipe dream hype snake oil salesman that's what they were for anyone watching this hopefully you see that hey you know what you come to the realization that hey you know what these folks absolute frauds and that with this new information you take action once again not telling you what to do what not to do i'm telling you all i'm doing is presenting information and calling out the misinformation as i see it until next time folks shadow stars out Happy New Year's. Peace.